My name is Ron Cantor. I am from Ashkenaz, Israel. I'm here with my wife, Ilana. And two weeks ago, I was invited with other faith-based journalists to view the footage that they took off of the dead bodies of the terrorists. What I'm going to share with you tonight is unpleasant, but it must be told. Already people have forgotten what happened on October the 7th, and they have forgotten the 242 hostages that are in the tunnels of Gaza. A young woman in a pro-Palestinian rally, just a few weeks after the massacre, somebody asked her, what do you think of the Hamas invasion of Israel? And she did not know what they were talking about. Hamas invaded Israel on the 7th of October. What was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I didn't believe they did, did they, Hamas? Uh, I think so. I, honestly, like, I think I need to be a bit more clued up on like, everything that's going on. So I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer that too well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen anything that actually shows that that's actually happened or actually correct. In the Hamas footage, I saw a father. Him and his two sons, 6.30 in the morning, they ran in their underwear outside into a safe room. The Hamas terrorists came in, they threw a grenade into the middle meat, the safe room. It exploded and the father walked out dazed. The terrorists shot him dead. Then they dragged the two sons over his dead body into the kitchen. Then the terrorists went to the refrigerator, even as the two young boys were in shock. One says to the other, Abba is dead. He opens up the refrigerator and he asks them, it seems like an Arabic, what's there to eat? And he takes out a Coke and begins to drink it. The mother comes home a little bit later with police and they found her husband dead and she collapses in agony. I don't know what happened to the boys. I watched as a dog came to protect his family, and the terrorists shot him, but the dog kept coming, and they kept shooting until he was dead. I witnessed as terrorists searched houses for anyone who might be alive, and then they shot them dead. Many mourners, they had no idea what was happening, and they just uh, drove right into the terrorists, and they riddled their cars with bullets until people fell out of the doors dead. U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, he talked about a woman whose breasts were literally chopped off while she was alive. Her husband had his eyes gouged out and then they shot them both. A soldier testified of finding a, a baby in an oven Die. that was on. His, head, his parents were made to watch him before they shot them dead. They, they took the baby in front of his parents um, and they opened the, the oven, they put the baby, two months baby, inside the oven, turn on the heat, uh, high heat, and just he starts screaming and burning. I'm sorry. Uh, the parents saw that, uh, then they shot the father and the mother um, in, in the middle of the living room. And you know what? The most shocking thing about what I saw was the joy on the terrace. I mean, it was like they were at a wedding or, or a sporting event. They were so happy. One of them called home and he said, Mom, Dad, I'm calling you with the phone of the Jewish woman I just killed. And he said, your son is a hero. I just killed 10 Jews with my bare hands. These savages have found friends. They found friends on college campuses in the U.S. and sadly on the streets of Europe. At George Washington University, they projected on a building the words that call for another Jewish genocide. Glory to our modern street Palestine from the river to the sea. At the 
Columbia University, Professor Joseph Assad, called the slaughter awesome. Cornell University professor Russell Whitford said he was exhilarated by October the 7th, and he called Israelis irredeemable excrement. In Sydney, Australia, crowds gathered at the Opera House and chanted, Gas the Jews. A Harvard task force was formed to protect pro Hamas students. And a letter was written by more than 100 professors rebuking the president for condemning anti-Semitism. People rejoiced at the news of the slaughter in the streets of Berlin, Toronto, Paris, and sadly right here in London. But where will the church stand? When the Messiah returns to Jerusalem, the Bible says that he's going to separate the nations as a shepherd separates the sheep and the goats. He will ask them, how did you treat my physical brothers, the Jewish people? Yes, the sheep and the goats prophecy is about the nations and their treatment of the Jewish people. Zechariah 14, 16 talks about the nations coming to Jerusalem after the coming of the Lord and worshiping in there. That is the time when the Lord will ask them about their treatment of the Jewish people. God is using Israel right now as a test. And the question is, world, where will you stand? BBC, where will you stand? CNN, where will you stand? Yes. Yes. I have to say that I have been amazed at the response of the believers all over the world while they have stood with the Jewish people. We're not going to give up until Hamas is destroyed and every hostage is returned. We speak to Hamas and we say in the spirit, let God.